I want to tell you the story of how a failed pitch for Kentucky roast beef, yeah, that's KFC, but for roast beef, ruined the entire American healthcare system. I'm Sean, this is The Classroom for More Perfect Union, and this is the video that got me madder than any other one I've ever worked on. No, seriously, I've seen so many examples of corporate greed and profit over people, but none of them have gotten me as viscerally angry as this one. This animation is completely accurate. This is the story of the rise of HCA Healthcare, the first major for-profit hospital chain. Yes, for-profit hospital chain. It was founded by two members of the Frist family in 1968. The corporate greed stuff that we talk about in our other videos, like monopolies or exploiting welfare programs, fraud, prioritizing shareholder returns over everything else, financialization of what should be a human right. Well, I'm not usually an SNL clip kind of guy, but this place has everything. Today, HCA operates 182 hospitals nationwide, many of which are the only healthcare provider in their locality. So in lots of cases, if you want to live, you have to trust HCA. But even if you don't rely on an HCA hospital, your life is deeply affected by what the Frist family has done in the name of enriching themselves and their shareholders. Manipulating American healthcare policy in a way that helps them and hurts everyone else. Let's go back to the 1960s, Tennessee. Dr. Thomas Frist Sr., a cardiologist, runs a hospital, Parkview, in Nashville. He's a part of the Nashville medical business scene which is a, a big thing. Lots of our current healthcare industry came out of that city and that time. Also among Nashville's well-to-do is Jack Massey, a friend of Frist's who works in a very different business. Chicken. Massey bought Kentucky Fried Chicken from Colonel Sanders, like the actual guy, then a small business and turned it into what it is today. His main strategy? Aggressive expansion and consolidation to push out the competition local eateries, and small businesses. But there was one enemy Massey couldn't defeat. Arby's. Kentucky Fried Chicken didn't sell roast beef. So he put together a plan for Kentucky Roast Beef, a new subsidiary that he hoped would push Kirby's out of the market. And who did he want to run it? A young doctor at the beginning of his career who had an interest in business. Thomas Frist Jr., the other one's son. Massey wrote Jr. a note on this brochure. Chicken, beef, or medicine? Make your decision soon. Frist Jr. took it a step further. What if they took the aggressive expansion and consolidation of KFC and Massey's ideas for KRB and applied it to hospitals? Frist Sr. said in his oral history that his son came to him and asked, Daddy, let's start a chain of hospitals like Holiday Inn. Like as if he was the little rich girl from Willy Wonka. Hey, Daddy, I I want an Oompa Loompa. I want you to get me an Oompa Loompa right away! He continued, Banks are together, filling stations are together, grocery stores are together. Why can't we put hospitals together? Economy of scale means so much. Frist Sr. and Jr. joined forces with Massey and started the Hospital Corporation of America in 1968. As all that was happening, in D.C., groundbreaking healthcare policy was being passed, leading up to LBJ signing Medicare into law in 1965. Millions do not now have protection or security against the economic effects of sickness. And the time has now arrived for action. Medicare is great. Our government should be offering health care plans for its citizens. But the original law was set up in a way that opened up for abuse by private hospitals. The payment system of original Medicare was called Cost Plus. Medicare reimbursed all hospitals for the cost of the actual care plus 2% extra for capital improvements. So when a Medicare patient was treated, the healthcare provider would get reimbursed what it actually cost, plus a little extra for building their for-profit business. Medicare does provide a steady stream of revenue to a hospital. Just imagine the money it could make. And beyond for-profit institutions being allowed to participate at all, they also got an additional 1.5% over nonprofits for capital payment for return on investment. Yeah, the American taxpayer was directly giving money to the shareholders of for-profit hospitals like HCA and funding their expansion. Any major new building for a company like HCA is risk-free for the investor. Only the taxpayer was taking a risk. 
These provisions were added at the bequest of two major lobbying groups, the Federation of American Hospitals and the American Nursing Home Association. The Federation of American Hospitals was largely run by people involved with HCA and others in the Nashville healthcare scene, which is a whole thing. All part of the cartel that Massey and the Frists were involved in. The legislation was also heavily influenced by the President's Commission on Aging, of which Frist Sr. was also a member. He said in his oral history, My interest in hospitals, nursing homes, and retirement centers was greatly accelerated when I became a member of the President's National Committee on Aging. So, seeing the way that Medicare was shaping up influenced Frist to go into the for-profit hospital business. He saw an opportunity. It was all a brilliantly staged heist of taxpayer dollars. By the early 80s, for-profit healthcare providers were sucking up 40% of all capital reimbursements from the government, even though they were only 7.6% of expenses. That's all profit. HCA grew incredibly rapidly, building new hospitals and sapping up smaller hospital chains, non-profit hospitals, and even apartment buildings and hotels to add to their empire. Hospitals acquired by HCA also cost the taxpayer significantly more money. A government accountability office investigation of HCA's first ever acquisition showed during the first year after the acquisition, the 54 acquired hospitals' costs increased by about $55 million. This is especially chilling when you look at today. Medicare for all opponents say it would be too expensive. But why is Medicare so expensive? Because for-profit companies exploit it. In the early 80s, HCA was hit with tragedy, what Frist Jr. called one of the most formative moments for HCA. The cost plus plan of reimbursing hospitals, the one that they were exploiting, was scuttled and switched to a new system, Diagnosis Related Groups, or DRGs. The DRG system paid healthcare providers specific amounts for similar illnesses and treatments. The hospitals were no longer telling Medicare how much to pay them. Frist Jr. called this, quote, the failure of the federal government to let the providers keep the gains realized from operating more efficiently. But this meant that some illnesses, some patients, were more profitable than others. Which, for a for-profit business, meant prioritizing the more profitable patients and sending less profitable patients to other hospitals. It also meant cutting costs and cutting entire facilities. Staffing went down, bed counts plummeted. Chris Jr. even complained that there were too many hospitals and doctors. <clears throat> Not only do you have an oversupply of hospitals in this country, but you also have another part of the provider system that's oversupply, and that's doctors, physicians. But HCA made it through. By 1987, when the New York Times profiled the Frists, they'd already had a huge influence on the American healthcare system. Chris Jr. boasted that since HCA was founded, quote, the for-profit companies forced the traditional hospitals to reorganize themselves into a more efficient type of system. To a guy like Jr., more efficient doesn't mean better at providing quality care. It means more profitable. The GAO had it right in their report. Quote, the basic objective of HCA is to expand rapidly enough to achieve a dominant position in the proprietary hospital field so that future competition is seriously disadvantaged. HCA's plan all along was to become unstoppable, the only healthcare option. It's what Massey and Frist wanted to do to Arby's, and it is what they did to our healthcare system. Monopoly power, that's when you have complete control over a business sector, isn't just bad for the competition, it's bad for everyone. But let's look at healthcare specifically, and what the Frists call patient capture. A large healthcare company is going to want to own a profitable patient from when they first go to the doctor with a problem to when they're cured or dead. So if HCA owns a primary care physician and a cardiologist, obviously they'd want the HCA PCP to refer a patient to the HCA cardiologist. In his 1986 oral history, Frist Sr., in what seems like a rare moment of altruism, said that that wasn't the plan. It always worried me that I'd have a conflict of interest in owning a hospital and making money out of the patient and out of the hospital. But in Junior's oral history, 30 years later, he bragged about just the opposite. Today, the capture rate is far greater because now the referring physician is frequently an HCA employee. Patients his father promised to never capture. That's a big departure from the innocence of, Daddy, let's start a chain of hospitals. 
He thinks he has an excuse for why it's okay. Back to the oral history. It has only been in the last decade we have the ability to measure and communicate outcomes, who will be able to demonstrate the value added to the patient to remain within the HCA system. The more recent adoption of systems with electronic health records has provided a great advancement in HCA being able to operate clinically as a system. That sounds great, Tommy, but we can't really know that referral to another HCA location is the best choice. Again, because of monopolization. HCA owns the companies that make the electronic health record systems that they rely on. HCA's mergers and size demonstrably caused Medicare costs to go up, worsened care, and made the frists a lot of money. So how do they keep getting away with it? Well, for one, there's another Frist brother that I haven't mentioned yet. William Frist, the one that became a doctor, but then went into a different business, the Senate. I know I said I'm not an SNL clip guy, but here's another one. It's Jason Sudeikis as Frist. Can't we just stay in Washington, throw some money around and get this whole thing straightened out? Frist was a two-term Republican senator who rose to be Senate Majority Leader. He had his HCA assets in a blind trust, but that was basically meaningless. And he constantly supported for-profit medicine legislatively. And he was super helpful when the family business was caught doing what they do best, massive Medicare fraud. HCA was allegedly paying doctors kickbacks to refer patients to HCA facilities, then charging the f***ing kickbacks to Medicare. Despite the huge fraud, not a single person went to jail and HCA barely suffered. The fine is nothing compared to their massive coffers. Some reports suggest that having a frist in the Senate helped minimize HCA being held accountable. And it certainly didn't stop them. If you look at their recent earnings reports, they consider changes to Medicare fraud laws, kickback laws, and antitrust laws to be threats to their business. These things are all central to their business plan. They couldn't exist without defrauding Medicare. They were admitting it. So let's rewind. I want to suggest to you an alternate reality. It's 1965. Jack Massey reaches out to Tom Frist Jr. about a business opportunity, Kentucky Roast Beef. And Frist takes it. Today, there's a KRB on every street corner. Arby's has been annihilated. You can go in and get a hot roast beef sandwich with the KFC quality you love. But oh no, you got some mayonnaise on the floor. You slipped and hit your head on the KRB's smooth, clean linoleum. An ambulance comes. You're worried. In your reality, this one, this minor head injury could bankrupt you. But in this KRB reality, the Frists never exploited Medicare, so the program was able to flourish. They never used anti-competitive practices to destroy their competition, so there's more hospitals, more doctors. Universal healthcare seems less expensive, so everyone in America has it. And you've got Kentucky Roast Beef. Isn't that a better world? The story of HCA is the maddest that corporate greed has ever really gotten me. Do you think you can get me madder? Give it a shot. Suggest a story that you think will really get me riled up. And if it gets me madder than this all did, we'll make it a video. Suggest your story in the comments on more Perfect Union's social media or hit me up directly. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe.